so with the book coming out now, the book is really interesting because you wrote it. I mean, it's very clear your verbiage. Nobody handed you a script, <laughs> which was one of the things. I mean, when reading the book, and even not reading the book because we've had this discussion before. Um, you know, I was I was actually just reading today the, the some of the Mick Foley stuff, and what I thought was really interesting: the feud that you were going to do and never happened. Um, both of you guys wanted to do a feud. You had this. You started it. He didn't get cleared. It was over. And then you can kind of look back and reflect it in reflection, which I thought was really interesting. The way I thought was very interesting, it's all kind of described in the book, is that um, you probably, as much as it sounds like you and Mick Foley could have had a great feud, when you look back, you kind of thought that you were going to end up hating it. And you're almost glad because you would have probably got fired because you would have be, been so mad at the, the basically what you couldn't do. I mean, like what you can do now, but back then when it's all scripted for you and you're going to do this, all these things in your head, and then they're going to give you the, the WWE script, so to speak. Yeah. In retrospect, I mean, uh, not to, I don't want to spoil anything in the book, but I mean, that's the uh, chapter in the book obviously is that, uh, and it was obviously a known thing that me and Foley had this feud going on. And there was a lot of behind the scenes stuff that people don't know about it. That is kind of interesting. And, funny and whatever in retrospect but in retrospect it's actually better that me and Foley just remains a total dream match feud if 90s Mick Foley and current or maybe a decade ago version of me feuded with Mick Foley for sure like that would be the shit like that's some dream match shit like the but at that exact time what would have actually happened was I would have come into the, I would have come into the building and I would have had it all in my head. Exactly what I wanted to say. And I would have had the promo in my head and the angle in my head. And I would have had it all ready. It would have been very cemented in my head. Then they would have handed me a script at this time. I didn't know there were scripts. I would have, not reacted very uh, good. I would have reacted poorly, to say the least, to being Henry's script. And then I would have been deemed hard to work with and a bad attitude and yada yada. And it would have, and it would have all just probably gone to shit. And me and Foley wouldn't have had this great feud that we could have had outside of WWE at a different time and place if we'd have ever crossed paths which we never did. That's for sure. Like, God damn, that's easy money. Like, Oh my God. That's like, come on me and Nick, like dude. But like at that exact time and place, it actually probably, probably would have worked out very good. You can read all about that in the book. I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, but yeah, that that's one story in the book of, uh, about a uh, hundred others that are, uh, in there. I guess that's why we're here. We're here to promote a book. So I actually like that Dave brought up the Foley story. Sorry. Because um, the w w when when you're talking about matches or, and your your where you are mentally and your mindset as a pro wrestler before a match or during a match or just thinking about a match, it was reminiscent to me to how Mick Foley thought about it. Mick Foley would talk about going into this zone and it, he'd be in promo land. And so both of you, the way you describe wrestling matches is so different. Your mentality is so different. Um, and I think I even mentioned that to you when, when I first read it. I was like, oh, this reminds me a lot of how Foley described things. And that's, you know, that's what people would consider the, the best wrestling book that, that's ever, that's, that there's ever been. Um, so when you're thinking of all of these stories that have happened in your life, the history of your career... Like, did you have any notes? Did you go back and watch yourself? Like, or just all of this stuff coming straight from memory? A little bit of both. There's no notes. There's no... I was talking with Jericho the other day. I did Jericho's podcast. It's not out yet, but I've already... I've already done it. Like, we already recorded it. And that will come out about a lot of the same stuff we're talking about. The process of writing a book and so forth. And, uh... I remember being like, because he did that book of Jericho where he had a, 
because he wrote down like the matches that he had and all that. And all. I didn't do any of that. I didn't write anything down. I didn't take any pictures. I didn't like, I just, and I'm like, I can barely remember any of this shit. So like a lot of the daunting part for me was like, fuck, I don't even like remember, like, is this any, even going to be any good? Like you got to go back into your memory. Like, uh, but luckily a lot of this shit exists on tape and you kind of go back. So like to, uh, like if I'm describing a match I probably went back and watched the match and went like, Oh yeah, that's right. So then I could like describe it accurately. You know I mean? It wasn't all from memory. Cause like, I don't have a very good memory. I have a memory of like the basic, the basic story or whatever, but like, you know, if I'm doing a play by play, like I for sure a hundred percent went back and watched it. And then I was like watching it and kind of writing with the help of the replay of actually going back and watching it. But, uh, it was just a crazy experience to, uh, to like, uh, cause if, at first I was like, I had just no interest in writing a book. Like it was not like it was brought to me. And I was like, I don't know. Like, uh, and, uh, I, now that I've started like the full court media press, I'm going to start doing the thing where I tell the exact same story over and over and over. It's just, it's just going to be hard to, it's going to be hard to not do. So I, I like, I will tell the story in other interviews. I know I kind of told the story in the Jericho interviews, but, but I'm going to have to tell it again. Cause if we're talking, this is what has to be done. I hate that. I hate repeating myself, but it is what it is. You know, uh, Actually, in WWE, they wanted me to write a book. And they came to me and they were like, yeah, we well, should write a book. And these WWE books, they crank them out really, really fast, right? And they want you to have a ghostwriter. And I was like, why do I? Ah, I don't know, man. Like, it made me feel really weird. And uh, they put the money on the table. And it was a lot of money. And it, but it just, ah, I just felt weird about it. And they had a... Uh, writer talked to me and I was like, well, I have some ideas maybe like, and he was like, no, we'll, what we'll do is I'll just, I'll ride with you for a week and whatever. And you tell me stories and I'll put, make, I'll make it a book. And I was like, like, ah, it just made me feel really uncomfortable. Like I didn't like it at all. Like, so what I ended up doing was going to, uh, Brian Danielson who had written a WWE book, which I thought was actually really good. And I just went up to Brian, like just me and him. And I uh, also, Brian told me I could quote him on this, that I gave it to him. He read it in a day and he said it was his favorite wrestling book of all time. So he said I could quote him because I said, can I quote you on that? And he said, yes. So there you go. So it's Brian Danielson's favorite wrestling book of all time. You should probably pick it up because Brian's probably the best wrestler that ever lived. So if he likes it, you'll probably like it. Anyway. I went up to Brian and was like, if you could go back in time, would you do that book with WWE? And he says, no, like instantly, instantly, like unequivocally. No. He said, it wasn't the book I wanted it to be like the rushed and whatever you have to ask him. But I, but I went, that's all I needed here. That's all I needed here. Like, that's what my instinct was telling me was to, to say no and turn this down. Cause you could be very easily get pressured into doing that. Especially like if you're like me, I was a company guy. I try to do everything they asked, everything I was asked to do, you know, and they're, I was about to do it. Like I was, but my instinct was telling me not to. So I actually said, thank you to Brian. Cause I was like, Hey, if I'd have done some shitty WWE book, like a few years back, this book wouldn't exist. So thank you. Hey, if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.